We the Revolution is kind of like Papers, Please, in that it's all about making you a cog inside a morally grey machine that will continue running whether you throw yourself on the gears or not. But unlike in a game like Papers, Please, you get to play one of the big cogs. You're a judge presiding over the Revolutionary Tribunal, spending your days trying and sentencing France's many political enemies during the Revolution, the ultimate arbiter of life and death in a time of significant unrest and butchery. But no cog was ever too big to not be stripped from the machine and replaced in the French Revolution. And during the Reign of Terror, the circle of who was considered an enemy of France was an always widening one. Take care that you don't end up on someone's bad side. As always, I'm Alex, and this is First Five, where I ask if games are worth your time, not your money. I played a game for five hours, and I'm going to tell you if those were five hours well spent. And today, we're trying to keep our heads in We the Revolution. This is the first scene you see when you boot up We the Revolution. Lady Justice stands decapitated by her own sword, her head resting on the scales of justice, where they are outweighed by the gavel of the law. Yeah, this is a game looking to make a statement. And while it may not be the most subtle imagery, it still packs a punch, and it's pretty accurate to what went down in revolutionary France, particularly during the Reign of Terror. It's not the only striking imagery in this game, either. Like, here's the first time I actually executed someone. There's a picture worth a thousand words. It's not often that games have moments that make me sit back and just think about what I just saw, and we've already got two. In general, We the Revolution actually uses its polygonal art style to great effect, and many of its scenes are rendered so strikingly that they elevate the story to new heights. That story is technically good, but hitches at a few points. We the Revolution is fantastic at capturing the spirit and emotional headspace of its subject matter and it's even better at leveraging its story to affect the gameplay at critical moments. New evidence can show up in the middle of a hearing that turns an entire court case upside down, or your relation to a defendant might affect how you approach a given case. But the one thing that holds the narrative back is that it can gloss over some of the details when moving from plot point to plot point, making events require a few leaps of logic to follow, especially when it comes to the motivations of various characters, including the player character Alexis Fidel, as he transforms from drunk judge to revolutionary power player and political schemer. The game largely falls into phases as you go through each day. First, there's a court case, which itself can be divided into different phases. First, you review all the relevant case files which explain the details of the case. Then you enter the questioning phase, where you take hints from those case files you just read and try to match them up with lines of questioning. After that, you pose the questions you found to the defendant, and after hearing their answers, deliver your verdict. Sounds simple, right? Wrong. Everyone wants something from you, and a fair ruling is rarely it. Even if you've got a guy who's guilty as hell, sentencing him is bound to upset the faction he's connected to, and letting him go is bound to upset whoever he caused harm to. Everything in this game is about balancing opinion meters. The revolutionaries and the masses both have an opinion on you, and if you don't vote in their favor, they'll take matters into their own hands, and you too will become another victim of the revolution. But you also have to manage your family's opinions of you. And you have a recommended verdict from the jury you're supposed to follow. And if you dawdle too much, the people of France might start rioting. In trying to appease all these different people, actual justice for the accused doesn't get a whole lot of space. I even sometimes found myself influencing the jury instead of how it should be the other way around. See, technically, the judge is supposed to listen to the jury for counsel, and if you go against their recommended punishment too many times, they'll make life more difficult for you. But during the questioning phase of a trial, you don't actually have to ask every question. Instead, it's fully possible to lead a one-sided inquisition that slowly manipulates the jury's opinion towards the option you want to pick. Now, that's all a lot to consider when judging a case, and it makes for a really compelling core loop. But then we get to the evening phase, and here's where things start getting a little shaky. After you finish all the court cases of the day, you proceed through a small set of side diversions. First, you spend time with your family, which is just a matter of clicking which button handles your family's opinion meters best. Then you fight for control of the streets of Paris in a simple board game. 
There was also one random time I even got thrown into a turn-based combat game, and I have literally no idea what was even going on when I played through it. Honestly, aside from that one weird experience, nothing here is actually bad. But none of these side diversions are fleshed out enough to feel like more than padding. All they do is dilute the overall experience of the game by distracting from its mechanical and emotional core. The one exception to this statement is the intrigue system. As you progress through the story, you'll find yourself in opposition with a who's who of revolutionary figures, and you'll try to get one over on each other with a series of backhanded schemes. Mechanically, these plots feel just as superfluous and padded as everything else at night, but they do hold significant narrative weight, as this is where a lot of the story is told. And unlike everything else at night, they often tie in with your daytime activities. Sooner or later, the people you're plotting against usually end up being tried in your court. There's also one last activity I haven't gotten to. Speeches. Often during a critical plot moment or when you're executing someone, you'll need to deliver a speech to convince one or more people to see things your way. Once again, mechanically it's pretty straightforward once you understand how it all works. All you do is match the best approach to each mood. But the narrative stakes of what happens if you fail are enough to keep these segments tense and interesting. But with all the pieces laid out, let's ask, how does this all come together? What do you get out of five hours with the revolution? Overall, I think it's been a really fun game. It's certainly got its issues, but the game knocks it out of the park where it matters, and that's emulating what it would be like to actually try to make it through the French Revolution. It's a journey I'm only about a third of the way through, however. The game is divided into three acts, and I've only just reached the end of the first one. And in particular, I can't help but imagine how much more satisfying this game might be to play through if it wasn't so padded with unsatisfying side activities that distract from that emulation. Padding is a cardinal sin when your time's at a premium, but thankfully, many of these systems are as brief as they are shallow. We the Revolution's core appeal still makes it a worthy title, however, particularly if you're a fan of sim-type games. It might not quite scratch the itch if you're looking for a really solid and memorable narrative, but if you're looking for a solid experience, then look no farther. And arguably, memorable experiences are what games are all about. And speaking of sim experiences, I also just got done reviewing The Occupation, a more middling but still quite enjoyable sim that puts you in the shoes of a journalist instead of a judge. And if you want something a bit less grounded in reality, you can see if the life of a sailor is the life for you in my review of Sunless Skies. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this first five review. If you did, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. If you're looking for games that value your time and don't pad themselves, I'm your guy. Thanks for watching this far, and I'll see you all next week.